On this episode of The Sequence, I'll show you how to use key groups. The Sequence. What is going on guys, DJ App here. New setting and I think you guys will enjoy it, but I definitely want to break down how to use key groups. It's a question that's asked a whole bunch on this channel and I do want to make sure that you know that I have a playlist for both the MPC Live 2 and the MPC 1. So with that being said, what is a key group? Well, a key group program is a way that you load up one sample, like for example, if you load up a C5808, it will spread it amongst the pitches of the key group. It's very simple. So for example, if you have a C5 bass sample or 808, then it will decline to a B, an A, and so forth, and incline to a C sharp, to a D, to a D sharp, and etc. amongst the octaves. So is it really difficult for you to understand? Well, let me break it down using the demonstration. Let's begin. So step number one, just make sure that you update the firmware so that it's up to date uh, with the firmware that's used in this video. It's version 2.9. So in the link in the description box, I have a playlist for the MPC Live and the One. So make sure that you update your MPC Live X or one to the latest firmware update and you can use that video and go step by step. There's no timestamps in it for a reason. So don't complain, watch it all the way through. So let's go ahead and hear the example track which uses an expansion called Pure Platinum by Snipe Young. So, hey. The link will be in the description box for that. It's really good and that's where all these sounds are coming from. And now, the first thing you need to do before we even get into it is you need to select a key group. So let's select the key group from the drum program to the key group program. And then the next thing we're gonna do is press shift and browse on MPC Live or the Live 2, or you can just hit the browse button on the X and the one. And now you can navigate to whatever folder that you want so that you can grab the 808 that you want. So I want to navigate to my 808 pack that I made myself. It is called uh, How 808s Are Born. I will have a link in the description box for that. All made from using a plugin called Sublab. And I, yes, I will have a video on how to make 808s using just the MPC Live X01 with drum synth, okay? So let's scroll on down. I'm gonna scroll down to that pack and then I'll let you hear some of the 808s and stuff like that but I've already selected them, but all right. So here we are down and now let's hear the sounds. Make sure that the sounds are on. Nice and chunky ones. And then you will just hit the data wheel to select the sample of your choice, whatever the, uh, the sample you're using. And yeah, so I'm gonna use big text and you can see if you already loaded the sample, it'll say sample is this. Uh, replace, I just hit cancel, just hit cancel if that's the case, or if you want to replace it, just hit replace. Boom. So now that we have that, I can hit menu on the MPC live two or live, and then hit this pad. On the one in the X, you have a program edit button. So you will be greeted with the screen right here, which is a very important screen uh, to what you're going to do for this reason right here. Uh, since it's an 808, we know we want the polyphony to be at mono because we want it to play one voice because a bass is usually not in like any different notes or chord progressions or anything like that unless you're like Jocko or somebody. <laughs> but uh, other than that, you have that feature right there. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and load up an 808 sample. So... You can load up an 808 sample right here. I accidentally loaded up uh, the 95 South 808. I'm gonna load up the Big Text 808. So you just select the sample right here. So make sure that you touch the screen to get to the sample and then click on the data wheel and then scroll and see which 808 you want. So I got the Big Text one right here. And we're not gonna talk about the screen yet because I just want to get you started where you need to be. So now that we have that, 
I'm gonna go ahead and, because the track was muted, addition it. And you'll notice if I press and hold this pad or any pad, that it plays the whole 808. Well, what if you just want to tap the pad? Well, if you go to this area right here, the screen called sample play, you can turn it into a one shot. And if you tap the pad, no matter how hard or soft, it'll play all the way through. And that's, I find that to be very good. It's a great utility to have. Now on this master screen here, uh, you can control a lot of things, but we're gonna, again, we're gonna do that again uh, in another part of the video. So now, uh, I have the 808 here, and it's playing chromatically, and it's not overlapping anything, it's playing one at a time. So how does that 808 sound like in the beat? So yeah, it's a nice tough 808, that's the way I like it, but now I notice a couple of things that I could add. So there's another key group that I want to show you, another way of using a key group that is. And what I want to do is this right here. I want to add another key group on this track number six, which isn't named. I just name it like pad or something like that. Let's go ahead and name it pad. Boop. And here we are. And now we can progress with this lesson. So let's hit menu, program edit. And now let's talk about the master section here. So the master section, it includes different features right here, which is polyphony and you can control the semitone and you can use the cue links here by the way to get to the different uh, parts of this tab so you know if i want to make it like all the way up to 32 because that's the maximum i can do that so that's the main thing that i want to show you guys uh, you can also control the semitones of that whole entire program and that will be very relevant for what i'm going to do a little later because we're going to layer some sounds uh, and you can control you know, the key selection, the key tracking. So if you don't want it to track uh, per pitch, you can deactivate it and you can control the overall volume and the pitch too, right on the master program. And you also, if you go right over here to note range, you can dictate how low you want it and how high you want it. So it could be as low as C2 uh, and as high as G8 or whatever you want. And again, you can control the semitone and the fine tune, uh, which will come in handy later. Uh, you also have this bottom part here, which I talked about the sample play, which is note on, which that's what I want for this layer. And you can choose to either uh, do velocity or cycle through uh, some of the sounds or even do random uh, layers where it'll play one layer at a time, which we'll demonstrate that a little later as well. Uh, we have mute groups. You can change the mute groups and do like a mute group one, two, and three, and four. Uh, but that's not really handy for what I want to do here. Uh, and you can change the, the polyphony per key group. So let's go. Uh, now, uh, so now that we have that, I'm going to go into my browser real quick. And I'm going to select some more sounds. So what I want to do is select some more one shots. And I have some sounds from, that I bought from Loop Masters not too long ago. So I'm going to go to my Loop Masters folder. Boom. Loop Master Packs. And I'm going to choose RV Lo-Fi Keys, go over here to Multi Samples, and I'm going to choose Flute. And here's very Lo-Fi, and that's the way I like it. So I want to choose a C, because C will tune everything, because it's going to drop into uh, it chromatically. So if you have, if you put an A in here, it's going to play that from an A and above and below the pitch. So make sure that you know that so let's go ahead and grab that flute all right and let's create some cool stuff so now that i have that flute here i'm going to grab some other stuff uh and then continue so now we're on the layers here again this is where i want to uh, deep dive into the key group and i want to show you a couple of things here so the main thing i want to show you is this right here uh you can load the sample of course so we're going to load in that flute boom the flute is there and now we have the flute. Now you can stretch and sh shrink this so that you could do a few things that will be very helpful in this next part. Uh, you can choose to start an endpoint right here. Uh, you can use the Q links to navigate that, by the way, and you can do the start and end points there. Uh, so we, let's uh, go into, oop, nope, I don't wanna do that. But you can also use the data wheel to select whatever sound you want, uh, just in case the flute or whatever doesn't uh, fit your cup of tea. 
You can adjust the starting end points again from right here on the touch screen. And that's going to be very important to when you want to do this. So um, the biggest question that people ask me is how do you loop samples? Well, you just go to this loop area right here and then you dictate where it is. And now it does do the start point. So you got to be very tactful of how you do your, your key group so that it makes sense. Because if I activate this option right here, which is the pad loop, then hold on, I got to unmute and then go back in there. you'll hear that it's just cycling through and it won't make any sense. So what would probably make sense in this regard is that I choose the end point to be something else. And then you hear a little pop. So make sure when you are going to loop something, and I'll show you another tac uh, tactic for that as well, that you select the end point so it's not popping. Like you have to really dive in here and get it to the zero point of that sound. So, so just adjust it so it's not crazy. And then you might have to go to the start point and see if you can get that going. And I have, <laughs> boop, there we go. Scroll through. Now it is a little tedious, it is indeed, but if you really want that detail to work for you, then you won't mind that. That sound design for you, baby, is is a pretty and ugly thing at the same doggone time. So we'll fast forward until we get to a certain point. So now, So now that I have the popping down to a minimal, I can go through the different pad loop features here. So I have this. So let's talk about the other pad loop features now that I have the popping to a minimal. And we'll talk about the round trip one. And we have the reverse. And you can hear that it's not it's kind of playing backwards. It's playing this direction. So you can also do reverse too. So let's do reverse. All right. So let's go ahead and do the other layers. I'm just going to add sounds in and then I will kind of dictate where they go from here because this is what I want to do. So. So I'm going to add another sound. I'm going to adjust them accordingly. Next layer, add this sound in here. And don't forget that you can control the semitone too of each and every layer. So make good use of that. So what else can you do to help this sound? Well, the main thing I like to do is go to this next tab over here on the samples. And then we're going to do some stuff over here. You can do semitone, fine tune, and you can do level. So there's a certain sounds that might be a little too loud. So I give it a little bit less velocity features. So let's do that. So we're just mixing it down. And then you can go to the next tab on samples and then you can choose the offset where it basically starts 
So you can make it start really fast or you can make it start really slow when you set up the offsets. So let's go ahead and make the flute come in a little later. Let's make it go a little later. And maybe this sound a little later too as well. And just maybe this one. And here, there you have it. So the next thing we're gonna do is go into pan velocity. So you can actually change the panning and I'm gonna change the panning a little bit to give it a little bit more dynamic range. I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a, a little bit of random stuff and use the Q link to navigate to different things like the velocity start, the velocity end, and the root note. So I'm good with that tab. I can go over here to the tab that really matters the most in, in my opinion and that is the filter envelope tab. So with the filter tab, you can choose between different filters. So use your Q-Link to get to the very top of the filters over here. And you can do different things here, like choosing different low pass, high pass. And you can hear it, it's a preview. So we're gonna use a low pass. I wanna get, get rid of some of those harmonics in the higher frequency. So let's mess with the cutoff. And yes, you can automate these parameters. So you might want to do that. Uh, and you can add resonance, which will. And you can assign it to an envelope for further, further tinkering. So let's go to uh, one part of it, which is the filter envelope. Let's mess with the attack. The decay and the sustain. Let's lower the sustain of it. Now you can hear the sound react to that. So now there's another part that I want to go to, which is modulation source, which is Q link number three. Uh, you can choose between the keyboard to the filter, which, eh, or velocity and attack. But I like to do velocity and filter. So the harder I hit on the pad, the more it will apply the filter to it. Let's go ahead and do that. Then it gives your sound more dynamic. So, you know, that's the main thing I like about it. So what I want to do next is this, which is the most important. So what if you want that sound or those particular sounds to sound like a, I don't know, a pad? Well, since you're in the amplitude envelope, you can adjust the attack and have it come in slower like a pad would. And adjust the release and have it have more, more release. And then you got to be a little bit more exaggerative of that, but still. Well, what if I don't want to do that? It's not my vibe and I want to get rid of su the sustain and have it be more or less like a pluck. So I'm going to get rid of some of the attack and add the K to it. And there you go. You have a pluck. And maybe, you know, I don't want it to sound like a pad, but I want it to sound like a lead. I just go over here and adjust it to make it more like a lead and I can just get rid of the release. There you go. There you go. And, you know, you can also go back to your master here and then choose if you like your leads to be mono. Of course, you could select mono. So let's go back over here in the filters. I want this to be a little less of a lead and more like a pad. So when I play. Yeah. So when I play like that, you know, I get a little bit more release. And then you have the LFO which is important. I think that's a very important one right there to have. Uh, and the LFO modulation, you can assign, you know, velocity sensitivity. So let's go into pitch or something like that. Mess with that. And 
and that gives your sound more of an analog vibe to it. Uh, not my cup of tea, but you know, you might be yours. Let's mess with the attack on the velocity sensitivity. Let's go, I'll mess with amplitude. And then last but not least, pan. So if I turn it up, you have LFOs where you can apply, you know, different waveforms. So you can go from sine, triangle, saw, and so forth. So let's just keep it at sine. And then you can sync it to the BPM, of course. And yeah, you can do all kinds of stuff here. Boop, boop. Or, or not choose it to the, uh, sync it to the BPM. You can turn it off and have that. Uh, you can choose the destination. Uh, I think that's important when you want to do something. So let's choose the destination here. And you can mess with uh, pitch. You can have it applied to the pitch. Actually, it's kind of... Mm, I, I think I want to make a beat like that. But anyway, so you have a filter. You can do it to the filter. I'm telling you guys, y'all sleeping on key groups. And it's only going... Mm, amplitude and so forth and by the way if you want to turn off this little thing right here you just press and hold the Q link and it will turn off that so it doesn't block anything uh, then you have controller modulation so yeah it, it gets a little deeper but last but not least let's add an effect I'm just gonna go and grab an effect I'm gonna grab a reverb here because I just wanted to be wet so um, And there you go. You can just add more effects uh, accordingly uh, to that. Remember, you, you're just adding that to the key group. It can get deeper than that as far as your effects go. So, you know, I can go over here and add effects too. And let's just go ahead and hear what it would sound like. Yeah, so it's sounding good. So nothing to it but to do it, huh? Let's go ahead and uh, play with it a little bit. That's what she said. <laughs> Let's go. Hey. Mm -hmm. So. Tell me how you feel about this video. Do you like the new vibes that I have here? Um, I definitely want to give guys a, a different outlook on this video, but hopefully you understand key groups. Again, the link will be in the description box to the MPC, help support this channel, because if you use that affiliate link, it will help support this channel. Uh, other than that, just let me know in the comments of what you want next, and I will cover it, and make sure that you check out the playlist in the description box.